when I was a kid, we were in that it was in the fifties. Mm-hmm. We would go up to the corner, four blocks away from home, to a delicatessen, and there they sold bagels out of a bag. You'd reach in and pull your bagels out. Hi, I'm Bella, and I'm here today to talk about bagels. There are a number of debates surrounding the legendary origins of the bagel. Maria Bolinska, author of The Bagel, The Surprising History of Modest Bread, argues that the bagel as we know it originated in Poland as part of anti-Semitic laws prohibiting Polish Jews from baking bread. Matthew Goodman, author of The Rise and Fall of the Bagel, argues instead that the bagel was born in Vienna as a tribute to the Polish cavalry that had saved the city from invading Turks. Whatever the story, it seems that most legends label the bagel as important to Polish Jewish culture. Bagels were even offered to pregnant Polish women in hopes for healthy children. It's important to note that bagels were not the only hard ring of dough found at the time. There were also Italian Tarali, Chinese Gyoding Naan, and Polish Obwarzynek. Goodman proposes several theories. One, that the word bagel was originally Yiddish, but two, it could also stem from the German word for syrup, steigbugel. Three, the German verb for bend, to bend, bagen, or four, the, word, the German word for ring. Bagels were brought to New York City by Jewish immigrants from Eastern Europe, where they formed an important part of labor history in the late 1800s and early 1900s. It was hard work to be a bagel maker, with physical exertion and extremely long nights, but thanks to the Jewish Bakers Union, Local 338, it did at least pay well. Union 338 had such a lock on the city's bakeries that, at one point, 32 out of 34 bagel shops in the city closed. That was in what was known as the Bagel Famine of 1951, just for an example. But unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and by the 1950s, not only were the bakers of old getting just that, old, but a man named Daniel Thompson in Los Angeles was cooking up a surprise ingredient, the bagel machine. By 1963, the bagel machine was distributed across major cities in the U.S. With the new machine, bagel making was no longer restricted to the skilled Jewish bakers, and despite their attempts to break the machines, unions began to dissolve, and bakers were pushed out of the city, taking their practices with them. At the same time, Lenders and Abel's Bagels of New Haven, Connecticut and Buffalo, New York, respectively, began producing frozen bagels. The de-ethnicization of bagels was actually explicitly a part of Lenders' dream of bringing the bagels to a wider American audience, which leads us to the next chapter of American bagel life, the Americanization of the bagel. Because traditional dough was too tough for machines, oil and water were added to make it softer. Dough conditioners were added to reduce the previous time-intensive process of waiting for it to rise. Last, some bagel makers even ditched the signature pre-boil of the bagel, which gives it its hard sheen on the outside. Hot stars boil, I take my bagels and throw them in. I certainly felt that a soft bagel was not a real bagel. All the way through and you can tear it apart in no time flat. That's, that, that's not a bagel. Past they were a little bit smaller. Yeah, they used to be smaller. Right. Mm-hmm. Another part of the push to Americanize the bagel was to change its flavor palette, to serve bagels with sweet toppings like jam instead of the traditional cream cheese and lox, or to offer new flavors, cinnamon raisin, blueberry. We can even think of this as the origin of those famous rainbow bagels that we see splashed all over social media. My grandfather had much to say about all of this. I was a kid. I didn't know there was such a thing as a garlic bagel or a cinnamon bagel. I mean, God forbid, a cinnamon bagel. Mm-hmm. That's, that's all really American. Mm-hmm. At the same time, though, my grandfather chafed against the idea that the bagel as a Jewish food was separate from its identity as an American food. You're, 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 you're posing Jewish and, and American. He didn't feel like these two ideas are separate. If I could just add, growing up in a not Jewish household, mm-hmm. I don't believe at bagels started when I started um, socializing with grandpa's family. <laughs> it's like my social context changed. Uh-huh. I don't think anything really changed in terms of Buffalo community and how many bagels people ate and who ate them. Mm-hmm. At least I'm not aware. Hot, handmade, delicious. It's good for any type of epidemic that ever happens in Brooklyn. Have a dozen bagels and you're safe. There it is. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Nah, it gives me them bigger. Without this, I'm a lost soul.